Hello, what is happening guys? How are you doing? This is Rob of Rule of Two Review. Welcome back to the channel. And today we're going to talk about all of this information that came from the Super Smash Bros. Nintendo Direct where they confirmed the brand new DLC fighter, the final DLC fighter of the first Fighters Pass pack, which of course is Byleth from Fire Emblem Three Houses. That's right, the character Byleth, who in Fire Emblem Three Houses is basically just the default name of your avatar, whether you pick the male version or the female version before you change their name to whatever you want it to be, the character is known as Byleth. And so, this has been a pretty big deal. Um, you obviously know this. I mean, this video will be going up a day late. You know, that at this point, it was yesterday when the Smash Brothers Direct happened and they confirmed this character. 24 hours after everyone and their mother on the internet has been talking about it and debating it, you know, myself included, discussing it. A lot of people fighting about it. It's been a crazy huge reaction, which seems to be the trend to Smash Brothers characters anymore. And, you know, I totally admit to getting, you know, fairly passionate and having some big conversations about this stuff as well. Like, it's just a thing that happens. But there's definitely a side of the fandom that gets really mean and toxic and kind of shitty about it sometimes. And, and so that's unfortunate. I, I did see quite a bit of that today. I'm sure most of us did, so... Anyway, at this point, you know, every other YouTuber would have already made their video. Mine is going up a day later. But I do think that this character being announced, the, what is it, I think it's the seventh, the sixth or seventh Fire Emblem character in Smash Brothers Ultimate. This character being announced, the community's reaction, what it represents, as well as what we might be seeing in the future DLC for Fighters Pass 2 for Smash Brothers Ultimate, just has me thinking a lot about what Nintendo is doing with Smash, with these DLC characters, and just kind of what I think. In fact, I actually shared a couple of hot take tweets about what I think about this reveal on Twitter earlier today. You can see kind of this main one here that garnered a lot of attention, at least for the size of my Twitter audience. It garnered a lot of attention. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, I'm not really very excited about this. Here, here's the thing. There's two factors that come into the pilot reveal for me personally. One is I absolutely love Fire Emblem Three Houses. It made my top 10 games of the year. I think it is an absolute freaking masterpiece. This is this is the Fire Emblem game that has really converted me into a Fire Emblem super fan. Like, I fully admit it. The previous two games I very much liked, but I wasn't like this, you know, oh my god, fall to fall and sing to the heavens about Fire Emblem kind of fan. I was like, it's a really good series and that's it. Three Houses is just, it floored me. The game is so very good. The second thing is that despite the fact that I'm a huge fan of Three Houses, I'm not excited about this character reveal. I'm not excited about, you know, Byleth being in the game, really. Um, at least, you know, by comparison to what other options could be out there. Um, because it's not like, by default, a Fire Emblem character is bad, or a Three Houses character or whatever. That's not bad. Obviously, the thing I feel is what most other people have talked about as well is that there's just kind of too many Fire Emblem characters in Smash Brothers. And, you know, I'm a fan of the series, just like I think a lot of you guys are probably fans of the series, and so I get how maybe one might assume that everyone would be excited about another Fire Emblem character because we like the franchise. And even in a game with 75 or 80 fighters or whatever, it just comes down to the fact that seven fighters from this one franchise that all just are just so very similar. That's the other thing. They all fight similarly. They do similar things. It just feels, it just feels like too much. Now, I did also see other people mention a pretty good point, okay? That there's a hell of a lot of Mario characters and there's a hell of a lot of Pokemon in Smash Brothers Ultimate as well. And that's true. I really can't deny that. Um, I, I think that for me, it just boils down to the fact that those characters just feel a little bit more natural. And I think that there's there's just a wider variety between the characters within the Mario universe and within the Pokemon universe compared to the variety in the Fire Emblem universe. Like, the Fire Emblem characters don't look or feel that different to me. I mean, they are different, okay? I, we know that they are but the level of different that they feel to each other compared to the level of different the Mario characters and Pokemon characters feel is nowhere in the same league. And I am also not a Pokemon fan, so it's not that I'm, it's not like my Pokemon fanship is coloring my opinion here. I don't like Pokemon, but when I play those characters, Pikachu compared to Jigglypuff, compared to 
uh, the Charmander, whatever the dragon one is that breathes fire and flies. And then you've got uh, the, the lizard guy that shoots water like Lucario and Mewtwo. Every single Pokemon plays insanely different from the other one. And the Mario characters, you get Mario and Luigi that are similar-ish. But then you have Peach... And you have Bowser. Like, those characters are just, they, they feel nothing alike. And so either way, that's just kind of my default opinion based on this announcement. I'm not mad about it. And I don't think anyone is wrong for liking this or any character that's been shown. I mean, it's fine. Like, I have my opinion and I've shared my opinion that I found it to be not the best and kind of lackluster. But I'm not mad about it. We then want to start looking at this first Fighter's Pass as a whole. All five characters that they've shown. And that is something else that just for me personally, you know, this isn't about anyone having to feel another way. I'm not trying to change anyone's mind. That's not what I'm doing here. I'm just sharing the thoughts and opinions within me, okay? So before some of the crazier Smash Maniacs just start losing their mind in the comments or whatever, I'm not trying to change your mind. If you love it, that's fine. But for me, when I look at the whole Fighter's Pass, I'm not the most thrilled with it. The only character that to me is a really standout, amazing, impressive, awesome addition is obviously Banjo-Kazooie for a lot of reasons. It's a classic Nintendo character, and it's also a character that's owned by one of the competing, competitive companies that through just like the magic of these companies working together has now been allowed in Smash Brothers. And so there's just a lot going on with Banjo-Kazooie and Smash, right? And it just feels right and it feels exciting. Terry Bogard to me is, is an okay addition. I think that he feels like a more appropriate third party character for sure. And there's also no SNK fighter uh, uh, characters at all. He's the first of his kind. So there's also that. But then you get three other RPG characters and you know, as I, I had a conversation with some people on Twitter and stuff today, and it was it was a good, pleasant conversation. It was fine. And one of the things that I said is, if you're an RPG fan, you're going to be really excited about having the Dragon Quest hero and Joker from Persona and now Byleth from Fire Emblem. You know, like, you're going to be happy about that. But if you're not an RPG fan, like myself, even though, I mean, I like some RPGs. I love Fire Emblem, right? But I'm not an actual RPG fan. I don't really care about those characters. I don't care about a seventh Fire Emblem character. I don't care about Dragon Quest. I don't care about Persona. When Joker was announced, you guys, at the Game Awards, I didn't even know who Joker was. <laughs> I had to look it up because I was like, who's this clown? I don't even know who this guy is, you know? Um, and so I was like, oh, it's somebody from Persona. And that was fine. That was the first fighter. It was it was fine. I didn't, ha I didn't really care about it, but I wasn't excited because I didn't even know who he was. So... You look at those characters, and a non-RPG fan won't really be excited about those characters. But, you know, maybe if you're a fighting game fan, or if you're an action gamer fan, you would be excited about some other opportunities that might be showing up, or some of the other new ones that have shown up throughout the years, like a Bayonetta, or a Ryu from Street Fighter, stuff like that. Some of the other tweets I shared throughout the day were some of the other fighters that I was kind of trying to very sneakily suggest to Nintendo to consider in the next Fighters Pass, which by the way, today, Fighters Pass 2 was confirmed to have six fighters in it, not five. So they're actually giving us an additional fighter. So it's pretty crazy how much they're really throwing into this game, considering initially this was only supposed to have one five-character Fighters Pass, and now we're going to end up with 11 characters over the course of two years. It's insane. So to Nintendo's credit, they are doing an absolutely amazing job of supporting this game with content and DLC. Even if I don't care about, you know, 79% of the fighters or whatever, like, I, or I guess it'd be 80%, right? 80% of the fighters that they've shown. I don't really care because I think it's great that they're supporting it, right? So I can be like, I don't like four out of the five fighters, but it's great to see them supporting it. They're giving people a good value, especially those who like RPG characters. But the other tweets I, I shared today were about suggesting some of the fighters that I would like to see, and there's a laundry list of characters that I think would be really good. Travis Touchdown, of course, my first option and first favorite pick. Rayman, either the classic or the new version. Lara Croft, preferably the classic for me, but whatever, bring Lara Croft. Anyone from the Wonderful 101, oh my god, bring somebody from the Wonder Team over to this game, please. An arms fighter. Uh, Samurai Goro from F-Zero. Maybe we can get another F-Zero character in here. Anyone from Mortal Kombat. Or, of course, the big rumor the last couple of weeks, Dante from Devil May Cry. To me, when I look at the current five fighters in the Fighters Pass, I feel not a whole lot of excitement. Outside of Banjo-Kazooie, I just see a bunch of other characters that I'm just not really into, and I, I see one genre being RPG, 
a little overrepresented in the first five fighters in the DLC for Smash Brothers. Just my opinion. No one's right or wrong, okay? That's how opinions work. I'm just telling you how I feel, okay? But when you look at the list of characters I just named off, somebody from Mortal Kombat, you know, Rayman from the Rayman series, Travis Touchdown, a wonderful 101 character, an ARMS character, I think that, you know, we can safely say that there's quite a bit more variety as far as genres and game franchises being represented. I mean, Alara Croft, stuff like that. Let's get some more female fighters. I think absolutely we should do that in Smash Brothers as well. And so I think that when I look at what they've done so far, that's why I've been underwhelmed. It's very RPG heavy and it just is what it is. And no one, not no one, a lot of people have felt other underwhelmed by it. I would like to think that coming up for this next Fighters Pass, which we're going to see over the course of the next, whatever, you know, 11, 12, 13 months probably for Smash Brothers. I hope that Nintendo really takes stock and realizes, okay, we have to spread our wings a little bit. There's even a good chance that Nintendo wanted to get some of these characters out in the first one because maybe they knew they were going to be on the more underwhelming side and they want to really shock us with the next collection. And maybe... They knew Banjo-Kazooie was going to be a massive reveal, so maybe they wanted to plant one massive jaw-dropping shocker in the first Fighter's Pass. Here's Banjo-Kazooie, you're welcome. Everything else has been kind of ho-hum, because they maybe know they're going to give us some really kick-ass stuff in the next Fighter's Pass. A lot of people have wanted Travis Touchdown. Obviously, I've been asking for him since Smash on the Wii U. I was asking for him here. I voted for him in the little voter thing that they did, you know? So Travis Touchdown will be really exciting. A Mortal Kombat character? I mean, think about that. We've already got two Street Fighter characters in this game. If we get a Sub-Zero or a Scorpion or a Sonya or a Cyrax or something ridiculous in Smash Brothers, which no longer seems crazy, by the way. Nowadays, it doesn't seem crazy to see one of those characters in the game. That means you could have, like, Scorpion versus Ken. Think about that. That would be so freaking cool. Again, Dante was so heavily rumored, and it's a shame that he wasn't what was confirmed today, but imagine if he shows up in Fighters Pass 2. I actually think that there's something to a lot of these Dante rumors, even though a lot of that stemmed from the, the dude from Capcom working on the DMC3 for Switch thing, giving out dates, and so people thought that... People correlated that and thought Dante was going to show up today. I never really had an opinion. I was just going to wait to see what happened. And it turned out to not be Dante. But I just wouldn't be surprised if Dante is still planned. I mean, now that we know we have six new fighters coming, the sky is the limit. So I think that, you know, I speak for a lot of people, not everyone, but a lot of people when I say, I just hope that Fighters Pass 2 isn't overwhelmingly... RPG characters. There's nothing about the hero character that makes me excited. There's nothing about uh, the Persona character Joker that makes me excited because I just don't care about those franchises or really those gameplay styles. And I know that they're great games. Just because it's not my genre doesn't mean I think that they're bad games. I'm not saying that. It's just not for me. Just like you might not be a first-person shooter fan or a platformer fan. That's okay, but I am a fan of those franchises or those genres. And so that's what makes us different, you know? The Byleth thing, going back to that, it is just, that one's in such a tricky, you know, scenario for me because I do love Fire Emblem and I love Three Houses. So it's cool that Byleth is in here, but it's also just like, eh, just don't, I just don't care. I don't care that Byleth is in there. They could have gone for somebody so much more unique or obscure or just like somebody that added a lot more variety be between both the characters and their looks and their play styles, as well as the genres and franchises being represented. We could have had more variety. I mean, Nintendo has enough of their own first-party characters and games that isn't still represented properly that they could have done something with. Again, Samurai Goro or anyone from like the 30 freaking weird F-Zero characters could be thrown into Smash Brothers so that Captain Falcon isn't the one lone dude hanging out from F-Zero in Smash Brothers. And so, you know, to summarize this whole kind of nonsensical rant I guess I'm doing here, um, you know, I'll say what I've already, I'll echo what I've already said here. Um, I don't think that this is, it's right or wrong to be happy or mad about it. I think it just, it's the nature of the beast. You announce uh, DLC content for a very popular game, people are going to have opinions. And Smash Brothers, you know, Nintendo and Sakurai have kind of almost created their own problem here because by the way Smash Brothers is designed, as well as the DLC content and the reveals of these characters has been designed over the past several years, 
going back to obviously Smash for Wii U, they've kind of created this culture where it's all about that surprise, it's all about that reveal, it's all about how crazy of a character can we get included, how how far reaching into the ethosphere of gaming history and franchises, first and third party, can we go to say this is this character showing up and aren't you surprised? Like they've created this culture to be fair. That being said, I still think that people can take it too far. So again, whether you're related about Byleth or whether you're super pissed about Byleth, or if you're like me and you're in the middle and just kind of underwhelmed across the board, no one's really right or wrong. It's just all about how you carry yourself. It's just about, are you being an asshole to people? And just don't be an asshole. No matter what you feel, you can share your opinion without being a jerk. Um, which again, I know it's kind of silly to tell that to the internet because it's kind of what the internet does best is we're all jerks to each other, but that's just kind of how I feel. And um, I, I want to believe that the future of DLC for Smash Brothers is bright, you know? We'll see if the first character for Fighters Pass 2 really lands and is not another weird RPG character from a Dragon Quest or a Final Fantasy or like an eighth Fire Emblem person or whatever they do. If it's somebody really pretty cool that adds a lot of variety, then I think we'll be on the right path. Um, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. It's just all stuff that you don't even have to buy, you don't even have to play. It's just optional content if you want it regardless. Which is why, last point here, even though I'm not happy with this stuff, I'm also not mad about it because I don't have to buy or play any of this stuff if it's not for me. The base game alone is worth the $60 and has an incredible amount of content and a great cast of characters. And so I'm not gonna like, actively complain about something that's just being thrown out there for me to enjoy or not or enjoy, not enjoy based on my opinions, that's crazy, you know, so I've sh shared what I think, it's underwhelming, but it is what it is, so anyway, I'm just kind of beating a dead horse here, that's what's going on, those are my opinions and my thoughts about the Smash DLC situation, very crazy, what do you guys think, what were your opinions about Byleth being revealed, and what do you think about Fighters Pass season, or the first Fighters Pass, <laughs> now that we've seen all of the characters. Discuss it below, and of course, this video is a wrap. Thanks, of course, as always, for tuning in, guys. This is Rob of Rule of Review, and I'll catch you next time on another video.